Welcome to project management. This is a fundamental course in the basics of project management. We're going to cover a wide range of topics in this course, and we will start with an overview of what a project is and the managerial process. So here our, our map or our network diagram. There are two chapters we're not going to, to cover. That would be chapter number 12, which has to do with outsourcing, and chapter number 16, which is dealing with international projects. But the other 14 chapters we will cover, and we'll simply do them in numerical order from 1 to, in this case, 15, with, of course, leaving number 12 out. So that's an overview of what we're going to do. You'll need these chapters to be able to do your project report. So we have some objectives. I'm not going to read all of the objectives every time. But I'm just going to highlight we need to understand why projects are important, especially in today's world, why 20 and 30 years ago there were no project management courses. And then things came along like uh, project management, and not only project management, but you now have several, you have concentrations or majors in them and I even happen to have a master's degree in project management which is one of the reasons I've been invited to teach this course. We're going to talk about how projects are different and how to identify that something is a project. Whether you realize it or not uh, you've done many dozens of projects if not hundreds of projects in your life and you will continue to do them throughout the rest of your life on a personal basis and in whatever work environment you you uh, wind up uh, working in. We're going to talk about the project management life cycle. We're going to talk about agile project management. And as a hint, you might want to skip ahead to that chapter, uh, which is chapter 15, and just do an overview because then you can use it earlier in the course. It's, an, it's a new way of doing things. So let's talk about what is a project to start with. Let's talk about some of the types of projects that uh, you can see that recent college graduates would be involved with. Installing a new data security system, developing a new fitness program, marketing, etc. I'm not going to again read all of them in detail. This gives, gives you an idea. Some of you will wind up doing work on an audit for a major client. That is a project. Some of you, if you go into, say, more of the um, artistic or creative community, you'll be involved with um, putting on plays or event management. If anybody's in event management, those are that's all project, such as the theater industry is also very grounded in project management basics, even though they are the arts community. There's overlap. So a project as identified by PMI. And PMI, by the way, stands for Project Management Institute. Just as the accounts have the CPA, uh, the project management people have PMI. It's a global organization, not just a national organization. And it accredits courses, and you can become a PMP, which is a project management professional. I am not a PMP. I have a master's degree in project management, but it is accredited through PMI on a global basis. So that's what PMI is. And this course will follow the PMI principles and guidelines. So projects are temporary. They're unique. And they result in a certain service or, in some cases, physical product being uh, delivered. Major characteristics, you need to have an objective. You going to university is a project. You taking this course is a part of that project. And you are a project manager because you've completed many courses successfully. And you're going to do the same thing with this. It has a definitive start and end. We're obviously at the start, and then there will be the end to this course when the term is over. You usually involve several different uh, people. It's not just myself that delivers a course. I'm sort of the 
the front person for it, but there are people from IT that help with the design. The book publishers help tremendously. All these PowerPoint slides are from them. The questions that I'm going to use and the and the, the assessment techniques are going to be from them. And I access my colleagues for getting things like grading rubrics for the report that you're going to write. And the admin staff are very important for helping us set up courses, the IT people for, uh, again, helping us set up courses online, the administration for uh, scheduling or helping along with the admin people for scheduling the courses and the times and all of that. Projects are things that haven't been done before. Even a builder, even if they built the same house or same style of house, it's on a different piece of land. If it's going to have some differences, whether it be uh, the materials that actually go into it, it's going to be different that it's not going to be the exact same laborers. It's not going to be the same carpenter or, or plumber or people working on it. And so the, it's still going to be unique, even if there's familiarity with it. You, the three major binds or constraints are time, cost, and scope which is the performance requirements. So you need to define what your project is, and that takes some time. You should start uh, meeting with your classmates right away, start talking about what kind of project you're going to work on. I'm very open-ended about that. I've seen sometimes where instructors will give students three or four choices. The problem that I have with that is, what if you don't like it? Anymore? Then you're forced to do something you don't like, and it tends to be kind of unmotivating. So start talking about what you want to do and then run it past me just to make sure that it is actually a project and you're headed in the right direction. It doesn't have to be anything particularly formal, but you know, start to define like what is your going to your project going to be? Is it going to be on sustainability, building a house, planning a wedding, planning a trip tends to be a very popular uh, one. Pick something that you have a desire to do and and you'll you'll wind up probably doing a lot better than if I just force you to do a project on a particular topic that you have no interest in so you can see that uh, some examples at the bottom completion of a required course completion of all your courses for your business major or or public relations or information design or environmental services, whatever the case may be. Now, how projects compare with uh, regular operations. I also teach supply chain slash operations management, and they're trying to do the same thing over and over again with as little amount of variability. Well, projects are the exact opposite of that. They are unique. You're only doing them once, and then you're not doing them again. So writing a term paper is unique versus taking class notes. When you're in the class, you know, perhaps some of you are sitting there right now, taking a few notes on this, highlighting certain things. And I will do very much my best to really highlight the really important things because there's just, there tends to be about 30 slides per chapter. And that's just too much uh, information for a person to absorb with us doing 14 chapters. That's 520 slides. You get, that's just mind boggling, at least it is for me, all right? So we're going to try and really filter it down to what's important and just use this as a backup or a reference or just to get general information. And I'll give you some specific examples from the chapters. So there'll be some more videos on specific problems of, or questions from the, the various chapters. Then it'll be also an opportunity for you to do uh, some questions uh, with the online uh, resources. I'm going to put it in connect and there'll be a chance for you to earn some marks and learn some of the material in further depth. So I'll just give you a chance to, to look this over. Again, I'm not going to try and just read the PowerPoint slides. I'm sure you're quite capable of doing that on your own. The project management life cycle. This is very similar to the product life cycle that you have 
and taken in your marketing class. You have the ideation stage, which they call defining. You have the planning stage, and you can see all the tasks that are done. This is what you'll go through and have gone through when you've done projects. And by the way, the planning stage is the most common area for mistakes. So because people don't plan enough. I heard a phrase that you may have heard. People don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. So you had to put a lot of time and effort into planning to go to university and how you're going to approach pre-pandemic, concurrent pandemic, and post-pandemic learning. It will have changed your lives and your learning experiences just as it has changed mine. Then you'll do the execution. We're not going to obviously do the execution. Some courses uh, do that, but we especially in a pandemic world, there is no way that we can actually make the project um, like actually execute it. And then we are going to close it. We're going to finish the project off properly. And that's another major area where projects fail. So you can see the areas underneath, and we're going to go through these throughout the course. Uh, we're going to have a chapter specifically on closing. We're definitely going to have uh, under the planning uh, stage. We're going to talk about schedules for time. We've got budgets, resources, risks, all of those kind of things. So this is your template and for the, the course. There are other textbooks uh, that used a different template. So I had one book one time is like 11 or 13 stages, which is just ridiculous. So this is, you get the idea. You define that I'm going to go to school at whatever school, and you are uh, defining that. Then you are doing planning. How am I going to actually get there financially, job-wise, housing, on and on, and and also you know what kind of uh, accommodation I'm going to need for being near school or getting to school, roommates, no roommates, executing. Uh, and then closing. So the project manager. This person, I am currently the project manager for this course. But I need your help to be able to have this course be effective. This is a team. I am part of the team. You are part of the team. There will be times when I lead this project. There will be times when you lead the project. There will be times when you ask questions in our live lectures and, and ask questions and get feedback from myself and perhaps explain something that uh, to the rest of the class. So your participation in the live lectures is important. This is not just me talking and you listening, and that is called an asynchronous format. That is not necessarily a very good way to learn and can lead you as uh, stakeholders in this project to feel really rather abandoned. You didn't sign up just to listen to YouTube videos. This is not YouTube you or you know, YouTube University. That's not what's going to happen. You need to be able to work with the diverse, they call it a troop of characters, which I really rather like because, uh, as I mentioned, I've taken students in the past on tours of places like Vertigo Mystery Theater, Alberta Theater Projects, uh, companies that do projects, and, yeah, dealing with the artiste can be quite a, a challenge. But those people who run those uh, uh, programs or organizations really need to understand project management. They are very business grounded for them to be uh, provide direction, coordination, and integration. You're also you're going to be dealing with a wide range of people. You're going to have software engineers. You're going to have marketing people. You're going to have accounting people. It, it goes on and on as the, the types of people that you will deal with either for a short period of time. It could be few hours it could be months in fact in some cases it could actually be years if you are working on a, like I say a major NASA product or project and planning literally planning a trip to Mars 
All right. So we're also going to talk about ways to compress the, pr the product lifecycle. Uh, and uh, there has been uh, much shorter uh, development periods. So this is why uh, project management has become more important. Uh, knowledge or the access to knowledge with computerizations, internet, the, or the internet of things, where you just look things up or use voice to text uh, or, or just voice commands and ask your, your personal devices just questions. And it looks it up for you and gives you the answers. The triple bottom line, emphasizing not just profit, but people both in and outside of the organization and the planet. And small projects can lead to big problems if they're not done properly. Agile project management, which we're going to talk about later in the course. And I really do encourage you to go skip ahead. It's a fairly brief lecture on agile project management, chapter 15. It, it looks at doing things differently. And it's become, I won't say a fad. It's been longer than that. But it's become a new way of doing things as opposed to the traditional. I'll show you the traditional way of project management, which really comes down to this increments, chunks. So you have a once a month meeting or maybe every two weeks, whatever the case, or quarterly meetings. Whereas agile project management, the fundamental difference is you meet regularly, like literally every day, beginning of the day or several times a week. So it's much more incremental as you can see in the third point down and a rolling wave. So it's, it's because everything, and sometimes organize it, there's no reason, can't meet more than once a day. Very brief, like we're talking 10, 15 minute meetings. Not like you meet at the beginning of the day for an hour. No, 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 you meet for 10 to 15 minutes, be very focused and move on. And if you're not done after 10 or 15 minutes, you still move on anyways and go and get the work done. So you can see that in some cases, the long, uh, uh, diff uh, long separance, uh, separations or differences in time between when you have a traditional project and, in this case, uh, with the rolling wave, they it can be you you have more iterations or more updates because projects are organic. And by, what I mean by that is they're organic and they're dynamic. So if you're building a house, literally all of a sudden there's a hailstorm and the house is in a situation where it's not been waterproofed. Well, we have a problem. So you need to be constantly updating things like that and, and find out if, oh, the weather's been good and the, you know, there's the concrete is dried quicker and is cured more quickly than we had planned. So you can move things up. So you can speed up the construction of a house. There's two uh, areas, the, as you can see, the technical scope, work breakdown structure, schedules, budgets, all of those kind of things, reports. And then there's the what they call the sociocultural leadership problem solving, teamwork, negotiation, the politics that are involved, customer expectations. We will talk about all of these throughout the course. So you get a good understanding of how each one of them affects. So there's a soft skills side and the project managers do not need to be technical experts. They actually need to be, most of the problems are people problems. That's not that you don't have enough money, or you have enough backhoes, or whatever the case may be. They are problems with the fact that people aren't getting along, or problems that people uh, don't know what they're supposed to be doing, or somebody doesn't show up for work, and now your project's going to be late. So here's just an overview of the chapters. I'm not going to, again, go through and read all of these, because we're going to go through all of them except for the two that I mentioned. I even uh, left them in here just so you can see what they are. You're welcome to look them up in your book. Uh, so we're not really we're not going to do chapter 12, which is outsourcing, nor international projects, 
or for uh, with different cultures. So here's some of the key terms we've talked about. And that's the end of chapter number one.